My name is Bryce Kala, and I'm a dreamer. Both waking and sleeping, my rich and vivid imagination has been keeping life interesting since I was very little. So I'm going to share those dreams with you, and I'd love for you to share your dreams with me. Let's do this together in a little place that I like to call Somewhere in Dream World. and welcome to another episode of the Midnight Notion Somewhere in Dreamworld podcast. This episode could have been brought to you by pizza because pizza is a tasty thing that you can eat. Sometimes it comes in circle shapes and some ki- sometimes it comes in rectangle shapes. Sometimes it's cut into triangles and uh, the ingredients vary depending on your tastes. Uh, But if you would like to taste it, you can order it or make it because it's food and it tastes like pizza. (laughs) (laughs) My name is Bryce Kala. I'm your host. I'm not a psychologist, but I love dreams a lot. And with me today is Cody Madison. Hey, hello. Hi. Cody is a is a is a good friend of mine from the Twin Cities area who is also uh, oh, big, big news. (gasps) Another improviser. Oh my gosh. What? How do they keep popping out of work work? <laughs> Where do they come from? I don't know. It's like they're everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but not just any ordinary improviser though on the show today. We've got a 8 p.m. like superstar of the show, the of the uh, throwback program. Oh, stop. Oh. Stop it. No. What what what's going on over there? What, uh, what? So I randomly showed up for an audition and I was put into the living room at Huge Theater in January and February at eight PM. Nice. Yeah. And who's the director of that one? That's Jill Bernard. Which is excellent. That's like the scariest thing in the world to me. It's like <laughs> Jill watched me perform and she's like, That, I want that in my show. And I'm like, What? No. No, I'm some weird string beanie kid from the <laughs> suburbs. I'm not I'm not ready for this. Of course you are. You're, so I've I've seen you in Space Jam. Yeah. That's the only place I've really seen you on the stage. But you always deliver, and I think that you're going to do some great work up oh. there. So well, thank you. Bryce. I'm pretty excited for you. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. Uh, what else is going on in life? Uh that's a great question. I run a I run a podcast every week. That's uh, oh. Yeah. And the podcast now, I'm saying, oh, as if I don't know what it is. Oh, so the podcast <laughs> oh, is called Blake Up With Cody. I'm the with part. <laughs> uh, my friend Blake Thielman and I, we bring a guest on every week. They mm-hmm. may be real or imaginary. And we interview them about uh, breakups, relationships, friendships, all those different kind of ships. <laughs> yeah. Not too much on like Titanics and... Britannics and Olympics. I oh god! I hope that we have someone who comes on and they're like, "I was on the Titanic." That would be. The <laughs> I don't greatest. know. I feel like the last survivor has finally passed. We could have a ghost on like, our show. Oh, <laughs> I would be all about that episode. Yeah. Um. I. You know. I. I have some relationship stories. I certainly would like to be on that show sometime in the past. Yeah, maybe, maybe, (laughs) maybe you will have been on that show. Maybe I will have been on that show, indeed. Um, Cody, you told me that you you have some interesting dreams, and I'm pretty exciting. Uh, I'm exciting. I'm so exciting. exciting. (laughs) I'm pretty excited uh, to hear those once again in in the fully told version and share them with the world. Are you excited as well? Oh, I am. It's it's like a doozy of a dream. <laughs> I don't even... Oh, it's so weird. All right. Well, listeners, that means it's time to go to sleep. Uh, 
All right, listeners, remember, if you would like to hear your dreams on this podcast, you can write them in at uh, with an email. You can maybe I should set up a P.O. box. You can write them in with an email uh, at podcast at midnight notion dot com. Or you can call the listener line at six one two six four three zero nine four four. It's not live. It's a recording. You leave a voicemail message and then I play that message on the podcast. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, and I've already played a couple, I think one or two, and I have more building, and when we don't have a guest on the show, I will play those. Awesome. Yeah, so leave those messages, and also it's a great way to remember your dreams, to just speak them right after you wake up, uh, it helps you remember, and um, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want your voice on there, then write an email, you know what to do, or write a letter to the future P.O. box that hopefully I have someday, maybe. Hey, Cody. Hey, hi. <laughs> uh, so so that big setup, and then we're going to bring the energy down, and now we're going to set up for this dream one more time. Yep. Okay. So preamble. When, yeah. When when was this When was this dream? This dream happened in April of 2016. I was about oh. to graduate from college. I had about two weeks left of school, and I was super stressed out because I had switched my major about two semesters before like my last or at the end of my junior year I switched my major from teaching to English just straight up English oh. and I was super nervous about the future because I didn't have like any real writing internships or any experience at the gate so I was just going out with a diploma and I was like oh I don't, oh. I don't feel like I'm ready for the world oh yeah um so then one night I fell asleep and do you have a name for this dream before we get into it um I'm gonna call this dream how Cody killed Santa Claus <laughs> yeah that seems appropriate <laughs> how cody killed santa claus it's a long journey to that great okay, okay. so i'm in all right so uh we fade in uh cody is living back home with his parents he has just graduated from college and he's wondering hey i need to get a job but i don't know what to do with my life because i don't have really any skills i'm very just generic and average out in the world um, I'm going to stop talking in third person now and just <laughs> talk about me. So um, I decided to go and try and find a job. So I started like just going around giving people my resume, not like doing it online, just going into like stores and handing people my resume and getting in the instant face to face rejection of like, no, sorry. Get like out of here. You were you were handing it to the people who ran the store or yeah. worked there? So okay. it was like a weird like kind of montage of just like people in different uniforms being like, no, no. No, uh, no, that kind of thing. Uh, so I end up, um, at the Burnsville Center in Minnesota, and it's like kind of a smaller mall. Think of like the Mall of America, but very, very small. Yeah. Um, and I go into the Macy's there, and because it's like April, May, for some reason they still have the Easter Bunny job lined up. So I go in there, and I'm like, hi, I don't have really any experience. Could you please hire me for this? And they're like, you know what? You seem like a nice enough person. We'll let you have the job. And I was like, awesome. I'm going to get a job. And this is going to pay for my life. And everything's going to be smooth. So they take me into this back room. It's like this small little office. And there they have the Easter Bunny costume. And uh, it's like locked in the closet. So I don't get to see it right away. But they're like, okay. So the job's pretty basic. All you have to do is just sit in a chair dressed as the Easter Bunny. Kids will sit on your lap. They'll take pictures. You don't have to do too much. And I was like, awesome. So they open this closet and I'm expecting like a pristine white costume like they keep it in um, maintenance and stuff. But instead it's like this ratty old gray <laughs> costume like it's got matted fur. It's missing an eye. Gross. It's got like yellow teeth. It's been well worn and it's got like this really shabby vest that's like maybe plaid. It's like very dark. Ugh. Um, so... I put on this costume, and as I'm putting on the head, uh, the lips of this mouth, like, mold into my own lips, so when I speak, the mouth of the mascot suit speaks, so, oh. like, my mouth is now part of this gross costume. Yeah, and that makes it even more gross, just, mm -hmm. to, ugh. Yep. So, they lead me out there, and I sit down in the chair, and I wait for children to come sit on my lap. 
That sounds kind of bad. <laughs> well, that's what they do, right? That's true, yeah. So um, the first few children are like, you're not the Easter Bunny, and I'm trying to keep this job. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I am. I'm the Easter Bunny. And they're like, well, no, you're not. The Easter Bunny's not real. And I'm like, well, I, I am real, so I'm here. So after like two or three kids asking me that, um, like by the third or fourth kid, they're like, you're not the Easter Bunny. I'm like, you're right. I'm not. I don't know oh, how no. I ended up here. Just admitting defeat. It's like it's like having a tiny Sigmund Freud on your lap every <laughs> few seconds, being like, "I don't know how I ended up here. My life's not that great right now. What decisions led me to this?" Um, so this goes on for a while, and like parents, parents are like super into it, and they're like, "Oh, I can't believe it!" And in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, "Why are people like enjoying this? I'm like in a really scary costume." And people are treating this very normally. But I don't really realize it's a dream at this point because I don't realize it's a dream until near the end. Um, so I'm just like, okay, well, this is a thing I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so about six or seven minutes of doing this, this old man go comes through the crowd and he's wearing like, I don't know, like a green tracksuit kind of thing. And he's got like a big white beard and he's bald and he's got like this very worried look in his eye and he like pushes past past some kids and parents and he just comes straight up to me he's like easter bunny and i'm like yes <laughs> and he says hey listen i need help getting to the north pole there's no way for me to get up there and i need to be back there by christmas and i'm like it's april it's, yeah may april um okay um i don't i don't know what to do he's like listen you really need to help me if you don't help me then the holidays are going to be canceled so I stand up and I go back into the Macy's and I find my manager, who's this very short, bald man who kind of looks like Danny DeVito, but doesn't <laughs> sound like Danny DeVito. Um, I go up to him and I'm like, hey, is this old man out front? And he like pushed back past a bunch of people and he was like, hey, I need to get to the North Pole. What what do I do with this? Do I call the police or mall security? And uh, my manager looks up at me and he shakes his head and he's like, I knew this day would come. Uh, and then he, just, I just, I just love this moment that there's this whole, like it's, I feel like a commercial break happens. Yeah. Here. It's like a predetermined moment. Like I was <laughs> destined to do this. And like, I, 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 I wish that I wasn't part of this destiny. So, um, he goes into that back room that we were in before and in the same closet where the costume was, there's this big copper box that's got like two or three locks on it. So he takes it and he leads me out to the parking lot and there's like no cars in the parking lot. So there's this big empty space. So he fiddles around with some keys on his ring and then he opens up this lock box and in this single, or this big huge lock box, there's just a single piece of bubble gum. Um, and he picks it up and he gives it to me and I'm like very dumbfounded and I'm like, what am I supposed to do? And he's like, chew it. So I put it in my mouth and I start to <laughs> chew. And initially it's like, you know, when you like chew into a piece of like fruity candy, like you kind of get like all your it's like spit just start yeah. like tastes like that candy. Yeah. Um, so I take the first couple of bites of this bubble gum and it tastes like bubble gum. And as I keep chewing more and more saliva kind of starts getting up and it starts tasting kind of like pink lemonade, like mixed with bubble gum. And it gets to a point where it's just kind of like drooling out of my mouth, like in like a nice constant, like it's like a constant spit take of this gross pink substance going on my mouth. And I've decided, oh, okay, I've had enough of this. So I reach in with my uh, mascot <laughs> hands because I'm still wearing the costume, mind you. It's like fused to yeah. your body. <laughs> uh, so I try and grab this piece of gum and it gets like stuck into the like matted hand of oh, this no. costume thing so i'm trying to pull it out and the gum is like expanding in my mouth so oh. it starts like attaching itself to like my teeth and it like fuses with my actual gums <laughs> so like this gum and my gums are now just this single thing in my mouth um so i'm as i'm trying to pull this out it starts like pulling my teeth with it so like my my like actual teeth not the rabbit teeth are like coming oh, no. out of this so it's just like oh i don't want oh, this that's gross um and it's just like pulling my mouth apart and i'm just like yanking yards and yards of this bubble gum out of my mouth and i look over to my manager who's just sitting there with this concerned look on my his face and i'm like oh, what are you what are you 
and he's just like blow blow you idiot um in real life i can't blow a bubble i don't know how to blow a bubble through bubble gum okay um so this is where like the first hint of me like this could be a dream because i don't know how to blow a bubble Uh um because i start blowing and it's like becoming like a bigger kind of like bubble Mm -hmm. and after blowing for a couple of minutes it's just forms into this giant hot pink hot air balloon um oh and out from the burnsville center comes santa fully dressed in his santa garb with a bunch of people and they're all celebrating and they've got champagne bottles and confetti (laughs) and all this stuff and they're super excited and they all get into this air balloon or like a bunch of them get into the air balloon but there's still people still on the ground Uh, and the air balloon starts taking off into flight and it's kind of like that scene from james cameron's titanic where Mm -hmm. the boat's taking off and everyone's like goodbye oh right right and everyone's super excited and the music score swelling and yeah um there wasn't a music score there's like a like dixieland band playing or something just kind of like <laughs> to like yeah you did it way to go cody and i'm feeling pretty good and i'm like yeah i helped santa claus and santa's like you did it easter buddy you saved the holidays i'm like ah oh, that's awesome this seems like the perfect time for a cigarette <laughs> um that's another part where i was like this could be a dream i don't smoke in real life i've never smoked in my whole life but i guess the moment calls for this so um, I stick a cigarette into this big pink mass that's still <laughs> stuck in my mouth. I don't have any teeth at this point, so like my lips are kind of holding it in. Um, and I pull a lighter out of that shabby vest that I mentioned earlier. Oh, in and, the, the Easter bunnies? Yep, there's vest? just a lighter and cigarettes in that vest for some of reason. Course there so is. the previous owner of this, <laughs> maybe maybe the previous owner like actually lit themselves on fire and that's why it was all gray and shabby. Oh, um, that's I just, I'm just realizing backstory. that now. Yeah, <laughs> your dream has like a, a prequel. Yeah, I, I wasn't involved. So <laughs> I light this cigarette and I'm like, yeah, I did it. And as I light the cigarette, uh, the pink gum catches on fire what? and it kind of falls out of my mouth. Oh, no. Um, and then the um, line hooking up to the hot air balloon because it's like flying into the sky, but there's still like this pink line kind of tethering it to my mouth and okay, it's falling so, out so the the balloon is still attached to your yep. mouth oh, and it's great. like it's like a good it's a good like i don't know 700 800 feet into the sky now oh, God. um and the fire follows this line up to the air balloon and then just explodes it's oh. like and it um i, I blink and this hot air balloon turns into like a zeppelin, like the Hindenburg made out of bubble gum. And people are screaming and running around and I'm just standing there with a cigarette in my mouth. And uh, I see Santa Claus on fire and he's just screaming at me and he's like, why did you do this? You've doomed us all. And it crashes into the ground and I turn over to my manager and he just looks at me and he's like, you're fired. Obviously. And then I wake up. Wow. Wow. I feel like, okay, listeners, give this man a round of applause. <laughs> it's it's it was, an adventure. That is such That is such an adventure. Yeah. I've had some wild, um, long dreams, but it just, that, it just kept going. Oh, yeah. Like, when I tell that dream to people, they're like, your dream has a narrative. <laughs> what? what Usually well, how they does jump it, around yeah. a little. Yeah. But this one was like very straightforward, just like, okay, I get a job, Yeah. this conflict comes in, I resolve it, and then it doesn't end up well. Like, it has like a very streamlined, almost movie-like plot. Yeah, and with montages even. Yeah, because that, yeah, that opening part with all the, like, the store managers, like, I don't know, it felt very like cinematic. And when I dream, sometimes it seems that way, mm-hmm. like, it, like, because... I don't know, because you have, like, that visualization of just watching so much media that when you, yeah, like, just kind of think, you think, like, in that sort of form. I, I identify with that very much so. My yeah. my dreams are super cinematic. Um, a few weeks ago, I had a friend on here who had subtitles. Um, Malcolm Messer had, sub like, actual th- three days later sort of like titles <laughs> title up. cards yeah in his dream? that's awesome uh, so i you, i've never heard of that but what interests me um there's a lot of things in this dream i was writing down while you're talking yeah but um you 
you knew that it was like April and May. Was that just when the dream occurred or was there a thing in the dream where you're like, no, it's April? Um, I So I figured it was April or May because it like in my dream, I had just graduated and like it was two weeks out from graduation. So in my head, I didn't even really realize it was a dream until we were out in the parking lot and right. the bubble gum was like super high up in the sky. Uh-huh. Um, but then you also had even further, so maybe that's not as crazy to know what month it is, mm -hmm. but to, um, I'm interested in the taste part. You mentioned that you could taste the flavors of the bubble gum. Yeah. And you spoke about it as it, like a very real thing. And I, I started feeling like, oh yeah, I know what bubble gum tastes like, but I, I guess my senses are kind of blind in my dreams in a sort of, uh, like I can see, but okay. I, I don't remember a lot about sound or, um, or I guess maybe some touch, but sound and, um, taste aren't as present in my dreams. Okay. And so when you talk about taste, do you have regular tastes in dreams? I do like, so I think the two biggest senses that are like in my dreams are usually taste and um scent or mm. like smell oh yeah um because i like remember like smells and stuff like very very specifically like i don't know i have like a dream with like someone like i know mm. and like whoever i would like smell their scent or whatever and then that sounds kind of creepy <laughs> um i'll like wake up and then like i'll still like kind of smell that like mm. upon waking and be like are they in my room <laughs> what are they doing here and then like it just kind of fades out but yeah like the taste and smells linger very well and then like i don't know like another dream that i like i had like a recurring dream in mm -hmm. like elementary school it's very it's like a very short dream but like i'm in a van and like they're driving somewhere and they just decide to actively drive off of a bridge Oh, and um, then everyone just disappears from the van. It's just me in the van, and then it crashes into the ground, mm -hmm. and like I feel the impact, and I'm just kind of laying there. Ooh, um, but that one, like that sense of that was like the only one where it's like that sense of like feeling sure, like hitting hard. I guess this one with the teeth as well. Yeah, whenever the teeth I, falling you know, out is a pretty common dream, actually. Right. Uh, but this one had the extra element of them being pulled by yes. bubblegum. Yeah, blimp. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. Uh, so another question for you. Mm -hmm. Um, have you ever, have you ever been an Easter bunny or any sort of mascot? No, I've never worn a mascot costume in my life. So I don't know. I don't why. feel like it's a regular thing that everybody has experienced. Um, so I don't think that's, uh, weird that you haven't. Yeah. Uh, but I have. Oh, you have? <laughs> what was the mascot I would, I, costume? Well, so I was in, um, I worked for Target for a long time, and when I think I was still in my first year as a cashier, uh, one of the managers was like, do you want to be the Easter Bunny? Oh, you were <laughs> an like, Easter what? Bunny? What? <laughs> so I was actually the Easter Bunny, and it's exactly as you described it. The kids are like, uh, like right away, it was like, why do you have hair behind your, like, my hair was sticking out underneath and the back of the mask yeah, uh, of the head, I guess. And the rules are that you can't talk to them. Mm -hmm. You can't respond. You just have to like mime your way through it. Okay. And it's just that like you do that. I don't know face yeah. and you can't like communicate like, oh, don't tell the other kids like don't ruin it for them. But mm -hmm. the older ones are definitely like you're not the Easter Bunny. Yeah. And they, they know. Yeah. <laughs> Mascots have always kind of creeped me out. Um, yeah. And this fear was like accentuated like a week and a half ago because i was at home watching dancing with the stars for some reason before i went mm -hmm. to go rehearse with some people yeah and they were at disney world or something that week and i was like oh frankie minas i haven't seen him forever and then i saw mickey and like his eyes blinked oh no because now i guess and i looked into this and i was like oh so they put animatronic software into the mascot heads to nope. make them more lifelike Nope. And I was like, I can't ever go to Disney World again because I'm going to like be f so frightened. I feel like that was the worst part of the, um, what what was the, the animatronic like band at Chuck E. Cheese or oh, what, the yeah, Circus yeah. Circus, um, the Rock uh, something. Uh, um, the Rockadelic Experience Rocket or something. Yeah, something. Rocket. I know what you're talking about, but I don't, was. I feel like the thing that made it 
so terrifying was the blinking. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't so bad, but then because they blink for so long, right? And it's it's creepy. Well, like uh, it's it's either too long of a blink or it's like a shutter, yeah, blink like a camera shutter, mm-hmm. and ah, uh, it's not natural and it's <laughs> creepy. So, what do you what do you take from this dream? Um, does anything like stand out as like, was there any meaning or was it just an exciting experience? Like, were you, were you feeling something at the time and it just showed up or was this just a random occurrence? So I think that the dream occurred because of like my stress of going into the workforce after college. I was so terrified of going into the workforce and because I didn't really have any real skills, I was like, well... I'm not going to be able to make something of myself. So when I get out there, I'm just going to do some dead end job and then it's just going to blow up in my face. So this is like a worst case scenario. I felt like so I woke up. Sure. I was like, ah, oh, is that what's going to be like? <laughs> I know exactly it's not going to be like, like. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I think I was like, okay, it's not going to be that extreme, but like, am I going to get fired for just like screwing up? Like, because of something's out of my control. Sure. And I don't know, that still like haunts me. Even like this job I'm at right now, Mm. like every day I'm like, I don't want to get fired, but I also don't really like cling to this job. It's just something I do. Sure. So, so Santa, if you're listening, uh, maybe come rescue, but don't get in the blip. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, if you're real, can I get a job? (laughs) I'm sorry. I killed you in my dreams. (laughs) He'll make up for it. Another way, maybe. I don't know. All right. Well, with that, I think it's time to wake up. And here we are on Wake Up with Cody. Mm, You made a pun. (laughs) Hey, it's a pun. Uh, That's never been made before, I'm sure. Um, Cody. Yes. You got got any dreams in the waking world? Boy, oh boy. Um... I want to move out of my parents' house. That's that, a, that's, that's a priority. A good one. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, yeah, like that. I guess bigger things than that, because a lot of my dreams are like short term. Like I want to get a better job. I sure. want to find a companion, spend a lot of time with. I mm-hmm. want to move out of my parents' house. Like I guess. And more, those are perfectly. I mean, there's nothing. You, there's no size requirement for dreams, right? Yeah, that's true. That, yeah, it's insightful. Um, I guess. I want to try and improve as an improviser and make bigger choices in the scene and try and get myself a bit more out there and see if it leads to anything. Sure. Um, Like a good thing that I want to try and do in this next year is produce a show, either like something in Fringe or something on the huge stage. I don't know what, but I'd sure. like to try and do that. So do you have uh, so, uh, a theatrical uh, production is what you're saying? Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you have some history in theater, right? I do. I did history, or eh, I did. <laughs> you um, did all of the history. Yeah, I did all the history. I did theater in high school and a little bit in early college, and then I've kind of been doing some stuff with Chameleon here in the cities. Nice. Uh, they're great people. If you want to check out shows from them, um, but yeah, I I don't know. I think it'd be fun because uh, I used to write a lot of scripts in high school and college, and then mm. I kind of haven't been writing this last year. So I want to try and like adapt one of my favorite books into a show oh yeah yeah as do you have uh like a, a couple of those books in mind already or um i've got one in mind that i've been thinking about for a bit mm-hmm. um it's the crying of lot 49 by thomas pynchon okay um he's famous for this really like 800 page book called gravity's rainbow which is just about world war ii and all this weird stuff but that one's a bit s- shorter and it's just about a woman trying to find out why her husband died and there's a conspiracy with the post office and sure. there's no real answers is there a genre of choice that you um, are looking to be in? Uh, comedy. I've, comedy. I enjoy comedy a lot more than drama. Comedy is wonderful. Yeah, it uh, is. It's a fun one to work in. Yeah. And you'll be working in it more in Throwback. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, with that, we have reached the end of this episode. Oh. Aww. Thanks, Cody, so much for coming on the podcast. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, make sure you listeners uh, check out Cody's work on Blake Up With Cody on Apple Podcasts and look them up on Facebook to hear about relationship stuff. 
and maybe look up an episode I'm on. Yeah, go check out Bryce's episode. <laughs> and then write in your dreams for this podcast at podcast at midnightnotion.com or call them in at 612-643-0944. This episode could have been brought to you by pizza. I've been Bryce Collin. This has been Cody Madison. And until next time, sleep well, dream well, and be well.